Together with my colleague Rhys Green, I'm interested in the question of how we can meet rapidly rising food demand at least cost to all the other species on the planet. And we came at this problem from two different perspectives. Rhys had done decades of work on the negative impacts of industrialised agriculture on Britain's farmed and birds, which led many conservation organisations to conclude that the best response was to persuade farmers to do things like reinstate hedgerows and ponds, cut back on chemicals, and generally make farmland as friendly to wildlife as possible. The problem with this land sharing approach, though, is that it lowers farm yields, that is production per unit area. So to meet demand, you need more area under farming, leaving less land free for other uses like conservation. My background instead was in developing countries where colleagues would argue that if you want food and nature, the best thing to do once you've cleared an area of habitat is instead the very different approach of making farming as high yielding as possible, thereby reducing pressure for further conversion and sparing land elsewhere for nature conservation. Reese and I realised that to solve this puzzle we needed a mathematical model and a lot of new data on how individual species population densities respond to farm yields. Reese and others did the modelling and then together we dispatched a series of absolutely fantastic PhD students to collect the data in places as far and as different as Ghana, India and the Pampas. And the results were quite extraordinary. For every group of species, from birds to butterflies, trees to dung beetles, and for every region, from Kazakhstan to the Yucatan, we got the same answer. The least bad way forward for most species in every taxon we investigated and in every place turns out to be land sparing rather than land sharing. If biodiversity had a vote, it would prefer this land sparing checkerboard approach with blocks of land holding specialising in farming or in conservation. It would prefer that to a land sharing approach where we do both things in the same place or indeed to any intermediate approach. For me, the point of realisation in all this was less like Archimedes' Eureka and more like Homer Simpson's Dole. Why are there so many species on the planet? Well, the answer in part is because many of them are highly specialised for very particular sets of conditions. They like things just so. And so it's inevitable that very many of them decline sharply whenever we start converting wetlands or forests to fields or cattle ranches, however benign our subsequent farming practices might be. So, if we want these creatures to persist, we have to farm in a sufficiently high-yielding way that we can afford the space to spare reasonably large chunks of intact habitat elsewhere. If we don't, things will fall apart. But when you think about it, that's really fairly obvious. <laughs>